Well, good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting being held this December 29th, 2021. It is now 6.01 p.m. Meetings being held at the main meeting room here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 20. Please note that while an op option for a remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical difficulties interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus a virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of the in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with the remote participation details. The remote uh, dial-in number is 312. 626-6799 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Uh, those of you that are on Zoom can uh, go into the Town of Deerfield website and the Zoom link will be under the Deerfield uh, Select Board um, agenda. Okay. Call the meeting to order. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Okay. So the first thing on our agenda is the uh, what? Confidence analytics. I can't hear you. Confidence analytics. Yeah, confidence yep. analytics with uh, Nick Mosley. Um, Welcome, Nick. Nick, you're muted. <laughs> ah, I can un unmute myself. Hello, everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, I have a PowerPoint. Am I able to share that? Yeah. Uh, yep. All right, let's see how that works. Yeah. You can see my slideshow? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we can hear you a lot better, Nick. Thank you. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I'll try to speak up as well. Um, and you can see my slideshow. So I'll get started. This should only take me a few minutes, uh, barring any questions. Um, so thank you uh, to the esteemed members of the select board, um, members of the public, for having me here today. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is Nick Mosley. I am one of the founders and uh, owners of Confidence Analytics. We are an independent testing laboratory serving the regulated cannabis market. Um, I'm here today to present to you a proposal for establishing a laboratory physically located in Deerfield. The laboratory will operate uh, under CCC regulations and provide state mandated cannabis testing services to licensed cannabis businesses throughout the state. Um, our proposed laboratory location at Zero Greenfield Road would exist within a cannabis business park that already has a host community agreement with Deerfield. Our laboratory would operate independently of the other cannabis businesses at that location or any location. And we are therefore seeking an independent host community agreement with Deerfield. If successful, our laboratory would bring 20 to 30 skilled jobs to Deerfield and the surrounding areas. We are an experienced chemical analytical and microbiology laboratory operation. We currently operate two other laboratory locations, one in Washington state and one in California. Uh, we've been providing testing services to the regulated cannabis market for almost eight years, uh, longer than any other lab in the world. And in that time, we perform, performed over 2 million tests on over 200,000 individual samples um, within regulated legal cannabis markets. 
and we propose to bring that experience to, Deer, to Deerfield. Our team uh, is a diverse uh, set of experienced professionals. A few are highlighted here on this slide. Additionally, we would seek to hire local talent um, and bring them up through ex our extensive in-house training programs to develop experienced chemists and microbiologists right here in Deerfield. So the nuts and bolts, um, there are nine separate analytical tests that the state of Massachusetts requires to be tested by an independent third party laboratory for every batch of cannabis goods produced, processed and sold in the state. The laboratory must be independent and must follow established operating procedures while documenting every step of the process. The owners of Confidence Analytics do not have ownership in any cannabis license in any state. Um, other than confidence analytics. So testing is all we do and all the testing we do is independent. And our lab is also ISO 17025 accredited. We have a proud history of providing quality science. Confidence analytics, confidence analytics has pushed the envelope uh, in this arena and has always advocated for standardization and accountability within the testing sec sector of the cannabis industry. We pride ourselves in doing things right and never cutting corners and delivering science with honesty and integrity every time. When it comes to potential, uh, either uh, potential negative uh, impacts to the community of Deerfield, we believe that the laboratory presents a very small risk relative to other licensed cannabis businesses. The nature of our work is such that we, um, at any given time, possess a very small amount of cannabis product, making us a much smaller target um, for theft. Um, and we also don't have uh, a lot of outward facing advertisement um, or we're strictly a business to business operation. So to sum it up, um, we are requesting a host community agreement with Deerfield. We have a track record of doing things right. And we're excited about the prospect of joining the Deerfield community and contributing to its economic development and vibrancy uh, through good paying jobs in a field of work that is increasingly relevant to a massive industry that is rapidly becoming global. And with that, I will say thank you for your time and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. We, we too look forward to, uh, to working with you. I understand the idea is to, to be situated in the campus that, um, that uh, Ken Bequillen is working on. And uh, I think that that's a great idea. It's a good, good synergy for sure. And, um, you know, would provide, you know, good services to, you know, to Western Mass. I'm not sure how many other, maybe you might know this, just curiosity, how many other laboratories are in Western Mass? Are you, you, have I, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. I know that there are four testing laboratories in the entire state of Washington. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you where they're located. Yeah. Um, but I, I imagine not many in Western Mass. And as right. you know, it, yeah, it's a good synergy with other businesses. Uh, all product has to go through a testing laboratory in, before it can make its way to market. Um, yep. So rapid to market opportunity is a big impact to any local business there. And I do know that statewide, there is a shortage of laboratories. This is, represents a bottleneck um, yeah. in supply chain. And we're looking to, to widen that. That'd be great. That'd be great. I, I guess um, I'm, I'm excited that you would wanna do, uh, be located here. Um, but I, I would like to see if, if there's any possibility of um, working with our schools. And I, I don't really know how uh, to work with our schools, but you know, to encourage, um, you know, lab science kind of um, initiative with the schools and encourage um, science uh, kind of programs in our schools. So um, I'd have to- Yeah, we, we are right there with you. Um, don't have any uh, concrete plans at the moment, um, but would love to work with the select board or any other opportunities to work with um, students, uh, especially students in college, you know, 21 years of age who, um, you know, we could offer um, any amount of STEM education assistance, internships. Um, we're definitely open to any and all of the above. I guess I wasn't actually talking about working with you, but I was hoping you would support, um, you know, a science lab kind of um, activity in our high school. Uh, 
we do have um, wonderful teachers there uh, that I know from my experience from working on the conservation district, um, they're doing a lot of um, so like soil health kind of stuff and they're, and they're doing some research on that kind of thing. But um, I, I know it would be wonderful to support our public education somehow. So. Um, oh, I, yeah, I fully agree. This is uh, just, we, I, I have nothing concrete, but to say that, you know, if you could work with our science teachers to encourage, some, you know, or improve or elevate the science programs that are our public school would be wonderful. Great. Yeah, we'll work on, work on things yeah. together. Yeah, because, you know, we all know everything that they read on Facebook is the gospel. <laughs> so um, we'd, we'd like to confuse them with the actual science, if yeah. we could. <laughs> Uh, it's very important uh, that they really understand uh, the nuts and bolts about things like this and that, you know, uh, you know, the benefits and the dangers of anything that can be taken. Um, and, you know, and then here again, it can, because the cannabis is a growing industry, it can also open doors for them to say, maybe this is a field that some of these students could want to go into it mm -hmm. if they have a strong science background. So, uh, yep. Good. Education is uh, always a key, so and the I more agree. we can educate our, our public, the better off we are. And I think we have a wonderful opportunity with having a lab like this in town, too, you know, because it's not something that they would normally run across. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Great. I, uh, I, I, I'm sure we can come up with something. Yeah. Yep. Sounds great. great. So thank you so much. Yeah. Any questions for us at the moment? Um, I don't. I think we can follow up with email if we have any questions, but we're looking forward to taking the next steps in the process. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to uh, working together. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Like I, well, I would, I would make a motion to um, authorize our town administrator to begin the process of negotiating a um, host community agreement with our attorneys. Um, and I will the, second that. Thank okay. you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Motion carried. So, Thank so, you all very much. And you have Casey's contact information so that you can communicate with her. And We do. Okay. Great. Very good. Have a happy new year. Yeah. Thank you for coming and sharing tonight. Happy new year to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next thing on our uh, is uh, DPC, prospective OD. Um, they're not, uh, they're coming next week, I believe, yeah. or next, next week meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Yep. We do have a, a work group next week. We have a, yeah, we have a working meeting next week in the afternoon. <clears throat> that's on the third? That's on the fifth. The fifth. fifth. On the fifth. Yep. Uh, we have a, our normal um, meeting at the plant uh, at, I think, one o'clock. And then after that, they were going to come back here and Kind of start talking about phase two and you know where we are where we've been where we're going uh, can, in the future uh, can you post that casey so i can come mm, oh yeah so so what time yeah, would yeah. that be then? two o'clock two o'clock right okay. around two o'clock on the fifth on the fifth and don't we have um well okay so we, we have, have another MVP, meeting at five. we have the mvp at ten thirty, and then you said one o'clock down one o'clock is at the plant yeah two o'clock here two o'clock here and then don't we have a we have an executive session at five yeah. okay yep and then capital at 6.30, I think. Town okay. Common at 6.30. Sounds like that's going to be a pretty heavy day. <laughs> yeah. Heavy day for sure. One day. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, next thing on the agenda is select board reports. Trevor? Anything? No, I don't have anything on the select board. Trevor? Well, do we want to talk? <laughs> Oh, where going? would you like to start? Oh, man, I'm trying to think of where to start. So, uh, how much do you want to leave for your report? Maybe I'll do that. Um, um, we can leave some of it and you can chime in if I miss something. Yeah, why don't we do that? All right. I'll wait till Casey's report. Okay. Get on that. Thanks, now I'm going to miss something. Uh, no, I'll help you. <laughs> do that. Okay. So, Board of Health? Um, well, the new um, variant, Omicron, is, has a shorter incubation period and is more likely to cause reinfection. 
The good news is so far, we don't have it here in Deerfield as far as we can tell. Um, Greenfield has sequenced all their active cases, all, all 150 of their last active cases, and it's all Delta, Delta Plus, or the Delta Plus Plus. And um, Alex has uh, taken a random sample of ours and got it sequenced, and it tr has proven out to be Delta as well. So that falls in line with what basically is happening in New England, where the new variant really hasn't hit us yet. So what we're trying to do is brace people for what's coming. Uh, all the activity that is happening isn't even the new variant yet. So we have to, we have to think about what we're going to do. But as far as I can tell, um, if you are vaccinated and boosted, you, if you get the new variant, it will just be as if it was kind of a cold. You should not, it would, should, you should be protected from going to the hospital and getting very sick. Um, so I know this seems really depressing. We've been here, you know, we've gone through this. It'll be two years in March. Um, I, you know, just based on the phone calls that I've had following up on cases in town, people are feeling really hopeless. They've felt and helpless because they have have felt that they've been doing things correctly and they're still getting sick. And, uh, but we, we just can't give up. You gotta wear your mask as much as possible when you're in public area outside of your household pod and um, we'll, we'll make it. We really will make it. And um, we're gonna keep the schools open and we're gonna be as flexible as possible. But it's really important if you haven't gotten vaccinated, please, please get vaccinated. I'll just add to that too, the vaccination part of this. It's been heartbreaking to watch um, our hospitals fill up with um, so many unvaccinated cases uh, because those beds are taking for weeks and weeks at a time where if you're in for a gallbladder or something like that, it might be several days and you're out. Uh, but these beds are taking up and the space is taken up by unvaccinated people that got COVID, they didn't think they would get it, and now they're um, having trouble breathing and um, are then put on a ventilator, having to be put on their stomach because their back fills up with so much liquid, they can't breathe, um, and then many times die. So uh, I think if you are vaccinated and boosted, you have a 0.05% chance of winding up in the hospital. If you are vaccinated, you know, that that's where, I mean, if you're not vaccinated, that's where all the cases are showing up is people who are unvaccinated. And, and what it does, it's not only that about yourself, right? You want to choose or not choose. What it does is when you get it and you wind up in the hospital, because you probably will, you take the space of the person who just got in a car accident or who has a liver problem or, who is going in for some, you know, a ruptured pancreas or, you know, any kind of thing that are, are going on, like a normal people have problems, they need to go to the ER, you're taking up all that space. So nobody has the ability to service you and they're beginning to start, you know, they're going to start rationing care. Um, the talking with ER nurses um, and reading the articles in the paper about Springfield and many other areas, they are full and they just, uh, it's so depressing for them to have to be taking care of people who are unvaccinated. They have not gotten vaccinated and here we are two years later, wind up with COVID um, and, and, and now want the shot because it's too late at that point. And um, it's just burning out our healthcare you know, personnel. They're, they're wiped, uh, we're all wiped from this. So. The faster we can all get vaccinated, the less we're going to have variants. And because who knows, you know, this Omicron is not um, not even here yet. Not even here yet, and and who knows what the next one will be. You know, we're lucky that this one might not be as, you know, it's certainly much more infectious, but it doesn't seem as um, as deadly. But we don't really know yet. It's that new. It's just you just don't know what the next one's going to bring. So I know it sounds like a broken record and but you know I encourage you to watch YouTube and just see what those patients are going through it's it's brutal um, and it's, it's brutal for the patients that have been vaccinated and ha you know need a simple procedure and have to go to the ER and can't be seen for 12 hours
So please get vaccinated. We're, we're working very hard to um, get the Vax bus here sometime in mid-January. Uh, we're looking at January 14th, although it hasn't been confirmed. And then again, um, in uh, February 4th, so that if um, people had wanted a booster or get vaccinated for the first time, they could be able to come. Um, we're focusing on the kids, but um, certainly all adults are welcome. Anybody is welcome. Yeah. As soon as we get it. As soon as we get the information, it'll be up on the website. Trevor will post it on Deerfield Now and our Facebook page. We'll get it out as soon as we know. Alex has been working hard on this and, um, you know, we're, we're trying very hard to stay on top of this. So right now, you know, the golden rule is if you're going to be in an area where you're not sure if people are vaccinated or not, make sure you're wearing your mask. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is a little bit of a turn this year from last year where the, we're also getting the presence of the flu and the mask help with the transmission, the cutting down on the transmission of that as well. So um, it's very important. When in doubt, just put the mask on. It's uh, it's a very simple thing, uh, you know. I'm asthmatic, yeah. Sometimes it's a, a little bit of a hassle, but you know, I prefer that type of hassle than not being able to breathe. So, um, so wear the mask if you're in doubt. You know, Deerfield is not putting in a mask mandate at this time. Uh, we feel that a lot of the residents of Deerfield have been very diligent already. Uh, most have been vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated and boosted. And it's, you know, it's a very good reflection on the town of Deerfield. So uh, just remember if you, New Year's is coming up, if you're gonna be in an area where you're not sure, put a mask on. So that's all I have. So, great. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So the next thing uh, we have, um, Yankee Candle. Yeah, Yankee Candle. Uh, we got, I want to thank them for the meals that they catered for our seniors. Oh, great. Uh, you know, they've been very generous to us. Um, you know, we're fortunate to live in a community where a lot of the companies that we have in this community support the town of Deerfield in a lot of different ways. Yankee Candle has had a long history of it. Uh, back from when Mike first started the business here, and they still continue with this. So uh, we're very appreciative of that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. I, I heard I, they, they just did it with no fanfare. I heard about it from Sharon Pachorik, and I, I, I was really, it was before Christmas. Really nice. It was lovely. It was fully, you know, full, a hundred, I think 140 wow. um, full meals. That's fantastic. Something, some number like that. Um, very so generous. it was it was very impressive and we thank thank them very much seniors definitely appreciate that for sure yep. it's been a rough couple of years yeah it really has okay the next thing on our agenda is uh, we have entertainment license for yankee candle we have four of them I'll make a motion to approve the four uh entertainment licenses for yankee candle i will second that uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried. Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, uh, put Marie Thomas, um, or allow Marie Thomas to post, to be authorized to post for the 350th social media um, platform. She is the wife of um, our chair of the 350th, Peter Thomas, and uh, she's very extremely talented. I'll second that motion. And she's willing to work, very work with us. So we're, we're actually really excited. And we want to thank her. And then, so, she, right. Uh, Any further discussion? Well, she would just uh, sign the town social media policy, right? And then, um, I don't know if she needs to come and get sworn in for this committee. She or would. Oh, she, she would. would. Oh. She would. So she, we would. Okay. She would be part of a regular it. appointment process. Okay. Great. Yeah. Perfect. So. And and she would be. I, I would like her to meet Casey and make yeah. sure she understands. She, she she knows all this stuff. Right. So it's not like. 
But she, it would be nice to, yeah. for Casey to give her just a rundown. Sure, mm -hmm. that's great. Okay. I'm good to go. Uh, next thing is. Oh, we got to call the vote. Oh, and all, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Thank Motion you. carried. Three zero zero. Yep. Okay. Next thing is the uh, South County Senior Center director position. Yes. So, Mr. Chair, through you. So, as noted in my email after the last Board of Oversight meeting, which was the twenty second of December. The boo voted to recommend Carolyn Ford be hired as the director. So if the select board concurs with that, um, my question would be whether you would authorize me to facilitate that hire through an offer letter and working with Ms. Ford if she's interested, still interested in the position. Yes. I, I would. Yeah, I would definitely make the motion that we um, take the recommendation of the Board of Oversight. I'm so excited and um, authorize Casey to um, pursue the process. Perfect. I'll make it happen. Yeah. So, so second approved. that motion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? I just wanted. I, I was just going to say maybe you could, Trevor, since yeah. you yeah. were part of the interview process, could you just go over um, I will. some of her background a little? I will. Um, just for the general public. Sure. I just first wanted to say how grateful I was to the, um, we are, to the search committee for putting forward three really talented people to choose from. Um, I think they all were amazing. They all brought different strengths. They all had different kind of personality and different strengths, but I think any one of them would have served our, our community very well. Um, there, were, there was consensus um, on, on Carolyn Ford. Uh, she, um, she resides in Conway and, um, and brings a lot of uh, public health experience. And um, she's um, worked in Arizona for a long time as a, um, uh, a kind of running a rape council, uh, counselors and kind of supporting, um, supporting that kind of work. And then has also done uh, quite a bit. And I could provide you with her um, resume. So you, you have her stuff if you want to follow up on that and, and, and read that. But she, um, she's great, great personality, I think is really excited to hit the ground running and, you know, obviously reckon, recognizes the deficiencies and the challenges that we have not having a building space you know we, we've just she's she's taking on a lot in this position and I think um, but recognizes that and comes to it with um, with a great uh, attitude and um, really wanting to to do something good for our seniors in our, our community of all three towns and um, so uh, occupational therapy um, and uh, she she has done um, yeah, she worked in Albuquerque at the Rape uh, Crisis Center. Um, she's worked for Mercy Life at uh, Pace, so providing OT evaluations and treatment of older adults, um, which is the program for all inclusion care for the elderly. Um, she works uh, worked for Encompass Healthcare uh, to present. She's a registered occupational therapist and um, just has a, a great personality. I think it's really, really going to be a good asset. I think the seniors will love her. And I know Sue is going to be very excited to have some help. And, um, and so we'll deal with the challenges that are going to be the challenges of finding a space and, you know, making, making a senior center. Uh, so we're working from the ground up. So I'm pretty excited. Good. Yeah. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, should be, should be great. Okay, um, we also have a uh, recommendation from the South County. Oh, we got to vote it. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. So, let's oh. see. So, I, I, we made a motion. You yeah. Carolyn mo motion. Motion, I seconded. Yep. yep. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Uh, South County uh, Senior Center would also like to uh, publish a vacancy for the outreach coordinator. Yeah, so the boo notified us and us meaning the town administrators after some, after some discussion after their at their meeting on the 22nd they would like the select board to authorize a publication of vacancy for that 
position, and that position is part time in the in the senior center. In the grant that's there now, so generally, um, I did explain. You know, so right now we we have money under the grant uh, to do the outreach there. Um, the other towns are, you know, really want to see that filled and and focused on reaching out to our seniors. So they'd like to continue that. Um, I I made them aware, and I think they already are aware that the um, the grant is going to be very competitive next year. And I told him, told uh, both member towns that we were in Deerfield working on other avenues to catch that if something falls apart, like we don't get. The SIG grant again. I know that we're going to apply for it again, but it is going to be very competitive. Um, so they just they would like to post this and get somebody uh, doing the outreach for our seniors, as has been going on since the last vacancy. Did I miss anything on that? Well, I just part of the discussion around outreach included the community health worker yep. earlier on this year, and so. From that perspective, I just wanted the board to recognize that this would, in fact, be completely separate, and it may not allow us to guarantee 19 or 20 hours through community for the community health worker. Well, the community, and, and I think our last vote was that the program through Allie's company was that we were using ARPA money for that yes. and keeping that separate, because I think my concern was that I didn't know how the other two towns would feel about us taking that those hours and putting them towards this. So I think we all agreed that we were going to use ARPA funding for the for that community outreach. But I think that as the year goes on and we see what the SIG grant, how competitive that is, do we get it again? I, I think it it does make sense that we try and look at more of a holistic way of providing outreach to our uh, to our seniors and. Um, I think that's the goal, Carolyn. You're working on a bunch of different avenues and ways to kind of do that. And it, it's everything's a moving piece right now, so it's trying to figure out how it all kind of comes together. But I think that the other two towns feel strongly about having what they have, and then let's deal with what comes later. I was just going to say, I everything is so much up in the air right now, and but I think the idea is that we definitely know that we need to do. We need to provide services. So mm -hmm. I would recommend going forward with this yep. and um, doing, we could get someone, hopefully, that is good. And then we'll, we'll figure Supplement. out how we, you know, how we pay for this person as we go forward right. with with the grants that right. we can that we can get right. and bring to the center. And, and then maybe whoever, you know, this is a small grant, so it has a few hours, but maybe what we do, right. we can entice somebody right. with a, another portion of that grant so that, you know, the senior center and the other two towns feel they're getting their money's worth and, and the coverage, and then we can we can bolster that position with that grant yeah. money and some of the ARPA funds, so. One, uh, that and, and the part that Sunderland is already part of our um, senior center and then yep. this new group that's working together and then alex has been working with mike archibald who is um you know the public health nurse for the foothills district right so i've you know and and alex has you know worked with michael for a while and of course we've worked with him for like mm -hmm. 15 years as a volunteer in our eds so i i feel like for the first time there's this huge amount of opportunity for collaboration and services, real right. services to the seniors. Yep. And if as soon as we get going on the church and get that up, that space ready, that's permanent, we can lo start locating people there to be available to our seniors. Right. And um, and I, then I think people will feel less isolated, less hopeless, less um, helpless to what's happening around them because you they're going to have interaction and, and be able to get resources and connected to, to resources mm -hmm. as well. So, I mean, we're trying really hard to get yeah. moving. And yeah. I think this is part of it. It is. So we'll continue yeah. with this and yeah. post this. So and did I make a motion to do that or not? No. Okay, so I'll make a motion to post the um, outreach coordinator position through the South County Senior Center through the SIG grant funding for now. Yes, I will second that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. At this time, I would really wish to thank my niece, Sue Corey. Oh, yes. God, please. Yes. She's amazing. Uh, she is just she is, uh, over and above. Really she's, stepped up. Um, she's been trying to keep uh, everything you know, together. And, you know, it really demonstrated how important the seniors are to her. So yeah. she's gone far beyond what was ever required of Absolutely. that position. So Absolutely. Uh, so grateful. I so, absolutely even agree. though she didn't bring me my peanut brittle yet, I'm still <laughs> thinking. <laughs> She's so busy. Be nice. Yes. Be How nice. do I get in on that? She's been working hard. <laughs> okay. The next thing on our agenda is the uh, tourism overlay changes. Um, these are comments from Anna Lee, and what I would like us to do is just forward this on to Lisa. So that we can have a meeting, you know, at least to review these just and and have a discussion with us. Okay. Would that be okay? Um, we can, you know, you know, what's that? I, uh, I'm not mistaken. So, the, I did say I had said something to Annalie, Mr. Chair, a while ago. That's one of the reasons that it's coming before you, um, and possibly could result in longer conversation with the planning board. Um, this was an initiative that was collaborative on the part of the select board. So right. um, my question was really everybody that was involved in writing it should probably be involved in any comments or concerns that would be addressed and some sort of some sort of a time frame would be useful to understand what the planning board's intent is. I don't think we can get um, this for the Monday the third mm -hmm. meeting, but I would like to have this on the agenda for the planning board on the in February. If that's an opportunity. Is that okay, Annalie? That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. But I would like Lisa to weigh in on the comments. You know, the um... and, and have a discussion. Because we were we were the proponents of the yeah. overlay district. So I, I, Lisa knows our intention. For the overlay district mm -hmm. so i would like her to discuss it with us and then we could discuss concerns to with the planning board okay so you want to see any comments that she has back on the next meeting yeah yeah sometime so we have a couple time. we have a little bit of time yeah. to look at it and you know i have to say my feelings on it is we really haven't even given the church overlay a chance to function yet I know. so um i think it's in my own mind, ludicrous to be changing it right now. Well, That's my own opinion. Um, it's just, you know, there may be some flaws in it, but what's kind of start working through the system and actually find out what the flaws are going to present themselves. Um, and then, you know, as a planning board or the select board, we can correct some of those issues. Well, maybe um, we could bring the... But, maybe. Um, it's just, you know... Changing things on top of changing things right now before something has really been implemented. You know, I think there's other bylaws that have been passed in the uh, recent history that need to be addressed first because they're uh, compromising some of our local businesses. I agree. I think maybe it's a combination of looking at um, so, the um, formula based business bylaw. Yeah. I would like to make some changes to that so that we can encourage business in this community. So Maybe we can have a discussion of a couple of different things. Yep. See if we can come up with um, negotiated. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you know, it's. Um, I, just, I just would like Lisa's input. Absolutely. Well, I definitely want I Lisa's input. Um, it's just in, you know, and I don't have a problem with people um, presenting things. And, but, you know, like I said, it's just because actually nothing's really happened with the tourist overlay system yet. So it's and now we're talking about changing it again at town meeting. Then it has to go to the attorney general, and then um, it, you know. So, but yes, any any time anything like this comes up, uh, it should be vetted through the town attorney, mm -hmm. uh, just to get their opinion and come back with a legal opinion on some of these things, um, because you know nothing was put in place to take. Um, authority away from either the planning board or the select board it was to just trying to enhance uh, 
business opportunities within the uh, town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Anna Lee, you have any comments on that? Yes, I mean, I think that the, um, the questions that were raised would be looking at minor modifications, not major changes in the law and potentially um, were seen as possibilities of preventing us from being caught in a situation of unintended consequences. And so I think it would be great for Lisa to take a look and see what she thinks. That, that certainly is a good next step. Okay. Thank you. Got my comments on the next item. Okay. Oh, have um, I, I have to be up front. I did not read this <laughs> yet. Is it? What's up? No, I think it's right. uh, the prevention <laughs> of discrimination and harassment policy. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did not pick, come in and pick this up to read it earlier. I went through it a little bit. Uh, I, I mean, I went through it, I should say. I went through it. There was a couple of things that. Um, I'm not going to bring. bring you up. can bring up. No, I won't. There's just a there's couple a grammatical spell, there's things. A couple spelling there's a couple errors spelling that you errors out that to I pointed me last out. night. I'm going to leave my copy with you so you'll okay. see them. Um, and then the only other thing I really had a question about substantially was the in the under under the investigation. Um, I think it just needs to be flushed out a little bit more about. Um, you know, obviously, the, uh, somebody who makes a complaint, um, this is about bullying or harassment of any sort. So somebody makes a complaint, we authorize, you know, first there's an initial um, investigation by the um, town administrator, gather small facts, brings this to the select board, is this something that we need a full-fledged investigation on? We authorize that or don't authorize, but if we authorize that, it goes forward, um, I think, what needs to be spelled out a little bit more in this last section, um, I think under B would be, um, you know, who gets told about it, how or not, because there, there is um, privacy laws and there is, um, I think there's been an expectation on the public that somebody makes a, a, a complaint and then everybody's going to hear about the results and sometimes that doesn't happen most of the time, most of the time it doesn't happen but i just wanted to i guess flush that out so the public understood everybody was on the same page before we approve it that um they they understand who you know that they don't get responded back the public doesn't get a everybody doesn't find out you know who got in trouble, who didn't, and what their consequences are. So I just wanted people to have a, a clear understanding of what the laws are and that it's spelled out, you know, easy enough that everybody understands that we're not setting an expectation that everybody's going to have an idea of who got in trouble and who didn't. That's not how it works. So, but there should be, maybe there is some, uh, depending, obviously, the, depending on the nature of the harassment and the police complaint or not you know there's there's the person in the people involved understand what's going on if it's a serious thing but it, it but it's not where the general public knows what you know what takes place do you know what i mean oh absolutely okay that's all so, I'm just so trying did to say. lisa lisa already approved this actually no alex no, and kate already approved that it's already approved oh, oh, so okay. if we're going to add elements to it then i have to yeah. take it back to them no, and, no, no, and no, talk no. it through I, I i just feel really bad that i did not Read no, it's fine. The, it's fine. Um, the this version. Yeah. I know that w I had yeah. read. I had read an earlier version, but I did not read this version. And so there was a couple. There's a couple reasons this is in front of you right now. So after our respectful workplace training, um, Mary and I had sort of debrief. Yep. And she suggested that we beef up this the sexual harassment policy and include more of the discrimination and other types of harassment elements, yeah. which I had actually sent to Alex before, Alex yep. Castro. Right. He does a lot of the policies under Kate's direction when okay. it comes to this stuff. So he sent it back to me and I reviewed it. And one thing that I had wanted to include was an investigative process, because as right. you mentioned, the public's been very concerned about not knowing what's going on. Right. Well, clearly there are, and I say clearly because I do this for a living. Yeah. For them, they don't. 
So I understand the, the, the need to know what's, under, what's going on, but the town's privacy and or confidentiality requirements as an employer take precedent over right. transparency to some extent, because we have to protect our own employees. Um, and so what I wanted to see in there was something that gave people an investigative guideline yep. because it had come up not only here with the select board, but also with the personnel board. And Annalie's been on the meetings with the personnel board and has reminded them a couple times. But from a, from a stopgap measure perspective, this is the purview of the select board to create policies that can assist us as we go through personnel issues. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see that fleshed out a little bit more, well, I can talk to them about no, that. You um, could ask them about it because well, my only it may be that we add an expectation, add a note about what the expectation from the public is. Just that, because, I, because, this, because this that's what I heard yes. from you, and I was like, well, yes. that should be somewhere that everybody is fully aware of when something happens, they can go to this document and go, aha, I do find out, I don't find out, I, you know. Well, but or, see, that's the problem. So some of this is situational. It is. And I, I'm not sure exactly how Alex and Kate are going to respond to that. That's fine. And if they say, no, you can't put any of that in there, then, I'm fine with it. I, I just, I was more worried about whoever's sitting in that seat or whatever seat. Right, whoever's uh, sitting the, in any the of these The moderator seats. who's overseeing some stuff, depending on the appointing authorities. So I just felt like there should be some sort of expectation and explanation to the public on what happens and when it happens. And, and so maybe, maybe it's a it separate doesn't happen document. in the investigative piece, but maybe it's somewhere comes else into the purpose. Or maybe it's a separate document that's stapled that goes with it, or I, I'm not sure yeah. how that works. So. All right, so I wrote myself a note that we clarify the expectations of notification. Does that right. cover what that's you want? That's fine, yeah. Uh -huh. Is there anything that you had comments on, David? Well, I just want to point out that It's not really the start, but it's the moving on of creating an employment policy for the town of Deerfield instead of having bylaws. Yep. Uh, that way, these things can be a lot more fluid. We don't have to go through town meetings. We just have to go through committee hearings and the public. Uh, yeah, and things. the public would have. Public could have an input, input on it, yeah. but it's just um, because, you know, just this alone, prevention of discrimination and harassment policy is so different now than it was 10 years ago. Yes. Yes. And that's I mean, why I've advocated just, um, significantly to make a change okay. to take all of that out of the yeah. bylaw. Um, I just I just read it. I'm okay with it. The only thing that I think I would, if you're going to ask for mm -hmm. a little bit of a review, would be the filing of the complaint. Um, is there any indication of a timeline? I, I, I think, you know, you ha we have to respond within, you know, so somebody, that's a policy. somebody responds at a certain, I don't yeah. want to say 10 days, but no. that was actually the reason I sent it to council with that question. Okay. Because, because I, of the amount of work that we can expect to be on the, the pressure we can expect to be under and the amount of work that may or may not inter interfere. Like today was all about personnel for four yeah, hours. Oh, sure, sure. Right. It, it, our response time, it may be different. And so that's why mm -hmm. I sent this to them and, and specifically said, do we have to put a concrete response time in? Because it could be fluid based it on could. the situation. Right. So to your question, that was why I asked. All right. Good. I just, that would be my only concern of looking it over. And then I also, from the, Trevor's. The expectation. Thing, yeah, okay. the expectation kind of thing. So. so I'm okay approving it if if we so we have a policy if we then could adjust it or do we want to just put it off for another two weeks you tell me I mean it beefs up what we have this really includes more types of harassment and and does do that it's, I mean I'm okay about adopting in the and then amending it at our next meeting Trevor, if, if, if Trevor would like to see those changes, I have no problem trying to work them through and I, putting it on the next meeting. I just wanted people to understand that we are working on it and we do have a document yeah. that it fundamentally addresses some of the problems we've discussed. I, I was just leery because I hadn't really read it. Why don't we just wait till next meeting? Okay, okay. 
Yeah, and then, I mean, I think it's, it, it looks good. I mean, I, would accept, I was just wondering about that one thing to just so that everybody and then I, I was just worrying oh, about the timeline. So it's probably better if we um, put it off. Just yeah, put it off for two weeks because then, then we and don't have we, to amend it. Yeah, sounds good. I guess I'll my only concern time. about the timeline, Carolyn, is it puts whoever's in these positions at a no. disadvantage if there's something that gets in the way or if the investigation, for instance, if somebody who's part of an investigation is ill or has a family member that's ill, if we're locked into a timeline that is like 10 days and that can't happen because of that illness, that that puts us in a difficult position as well. That was the reason. Yeah, I understand. I just felt that people should feel that there's a concrete deadline for our action. But that that concrete deadline is fluid. It depends on the situation, and every situation is different. I know, I know. I just didn't know if we there's a way to write it that would give us some flexibility, but would also give reassurance to people that we were actually responding. Well, uh, this I'm not talking about yeah. you not responding. I'm talking about future somebody else okay. not responding. Right. You know, there should be some you know, drop dead date that somebody gets some kind of response. Well, it's, there should be a certain amount of time that once a, a complaint is submitted that there's a response that acknowledgement that it was submitted. Right. Yeah, like, whether it's not but the investigation by then, but may right. take longer. Oh, whether, yes. Right. I'm, I, I'm not talking about the investigation. I'm just talking about acknowledgement and to the complaint. And, acknowledge and that, that we're happened. moving on it. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing. But it's not. Okay. I'm not sure if that. So maybe we do it that yeah. way. The, the right. timeline to respond to the complaint itself. Right. Not that it's done because the resolution. Right. Takes yeah. Because right. we also have others. all these no, no, 48 it's... hour timelines and all that stuff that no, we yeah, live right. under. I mean, investigation can go on for a long time. Yeah, yeah it can. Sure. So. Okay. Um, so I'll see what how we can frame something about responding in a timely manner to I'm the complaints themselves. I'm not interested in tying our yep. hands. I'm yeah. just trying to be flexible. Okay. okay. Thank you. Great. Uh -huh. Okay. The next thing is the placeholder. Okay. The placeholder, Mr. Chair, through you. So I've been talking to real estate lawyer who they actually had a transition in Lisa's office. They lost a lawyer, so they're okay. getting another guy who's now swamped. <laughs> but I all, I've been working with our contracts lawyer and the real estate lawyer and Barb to settle some of the other questions that have sort of come up around the purchase and sale. So we're hoping to have that settled relatively soon, but we do need to have the real estate lawyer respond to a question from okay. Barb. Um, so I reached out to Ben Taylor and then I directed Jennifer to follow up on it so that we can hopefully get it settled um, relatively soon. And I will keep it as a placeholder. Um, I'm, if, if you need to, I'm, I feel like we should post a meeting to sign it. Once it's once, once it's, ready. it's ready. Yep. Okay. Um, it just could be a five minute meeting, but yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I, I, I'll come I, in at any time to sign yeah, that thing. Yeah. 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 You name it. I I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't want us to wait. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. And so we have gone back and forth with them. The hot hell closes at eleven. <laughs> All right, eleven o'clock then. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next one is the FERCA Cooperative Public Health Services. Um, it's still my recommendation um, that we uh, not rescind our June 30th, 2021 vote and that we still notify the FERCA that we're leaving the district. This has given me the most anxiety. I'm sorry. Of any vote probably in a while. Um, but I understand where you're wanting to move and um, I trust that you have a vision and I've talked with some of the players and I trust that they have the vision, same vision. Um, I think my, so my biggest concern is kind of the transition. I know that we'd still be in the FERCOG Public Health Service until June um, and I really want to, I really want to see um, plan laid out, 
you know, MOUs, that kind of thing, and I know that we can get that done um, with the other communities and get a, get a good plan going, because my one of my concerns is the staff here, and if they're um, left in a position where there isn't somebody to come and see and we don't have anything laid out yet, what kind of position that gives them in, but I know that you'll work on that to not I, we will I work on that so that it that, doesn't happen. Right. I just I want to make sure that, that you know, like, right. it's from, not. From, um, you know, the town of Greenfield or the city of Greenfield has a full health department. Right. And I feel comfortable enough in our relationship and how Alex works with them and how I work with them and how they mm -hmm. work with us that we will have coverage. And the, have, I guess for the, and I, I guess can't for the really, public. I can't. There's nothing I can do until we actually vote the next year's budget at the right. meeting to go forward with our understood. You know, understood. We are we are kind of sandwiched in and cemented in until June, um, and we have the winter and spring to work I, on a budget to figure I, right. out what we're doing I, going but forward. But I do want to say that I have had such a, a wonderful conversation with the person I've been trying to recruit for almost two years. Yeah. Um. To be the new public health nurse for the seniors. Mm -hmm. And she is fantastic. And, um, you know, we're just so fortunate because, you know, like I said, I've, she's been a volunteer in her EDS. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she um, has the right personality and she really cares. And she certainly has an amazing background. So, uh, but we have to go to town meeting and vote our Board of Health budget. And right. then, we have to post and right. Um, no, but there's she a lot has of given me to do. assurances that she will apply, and um, if she applies, and we have an interview process that confirms what I've been so excited about, then I feel like we will be in good shape. Um, mm. She's also indicated if we need to, we, she would volunteer some hours to to transition before the July first. Um, Start and, date. and obviously we would have an application go out, everybody could apply. So we're just uh -huh. trying to find, go ahead. Mr. Chair, for you, would we be hiring a person directly to the town meeting? Yes. That's what I'm not clear about. That's yes. one of the things that I would. Well, we, uh, yes. So that's my question because then that becomes, depending on how many hours that person has, you're going to, you're going to run into unemployment costs, insurance costs. She will. Yep, she so there's will, soft costs involved. Um, the the going rate is between uh, well, in, instead of paying sixty five or seventy dollars an hour for the cog, basically we will be paying forty to fifty dollars. So we will get more hours for our twenty two thousand. And that uh, right now that would approximate. Um, I'm hoping twelve hours a week, four four, uh, four three four hour days, ten to two at the senior center. Um, is what I'm tr hoping to cover. So right now we don't have space at the senior center. Correct. And everybody needs to be aware of that. The, right. The, but there's the other a lot piece, of work to do between now and That's June. what I mean. There is a lot of work. So yeah. first of all, we have to incorporate a position whenever it gets hired after July 1st. That means we have to create it, get it approved, put it on the class comp. The, okay? That's well, not a small undertaking. The other, the, other the other option is to negotiate a um, an MOU with Greenfield, Sunderland, and Montague to set up a separate thing so that Montague, uh, Greenfield kind of carries that weight of the monetary and, part and Jen of it. And is willing to do that right. because as, we're applying for grants right. that would take, hopefully, cover some of that and, anyway. Uh -huh. And they have infrastructure of laptops, cell phones, and all that stuff set up already so that we might be able to negotiate something where it isn't and only a town employee, or well, we decide to supplement that. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to figure out ahead of time. In, yeah, the line item in our Board of Health is public health nurse. Right, and we and, can decide to spend that how we need. And we've been funding that line item. We just have not had that position because we had, well, actually we did. We had hired Lisa initially, mm -hmm. and we had Lisa for two or three, four years, I yep. think, almost. And then she was hired by the FERCOG, and the only way we could keep her was to go through the FERCA. Yeah. And um, and of course the situation has changed now with so many towns who just mm -hmm. don't get the hours. So 
the idea is we just need to move on and we co probably could resurrect that um, uh, job description somewhere. It's so here. I can probably get a job description, but from our perspective, and I say our and include Alex since he's going to be working on these budgets and learning how to do this, if we're actually going to hire a person, then we have to put that into a separate budget line because that means it's a payroll item. And then we have the question of oversight. Who's going to oversee that person? That's what um, we want. This is what I mean. This is a complicated thing to just snap your fingers and okay. do. So we that's, only have six months to get it in place in the middle of budget season so with that's a whole what, new process. That's why I'm saying let's look at multiple options. I asked Jen for a meeting of all four towns that we could get together, lay all this out, obviously everybody involved, and we can go, what are we looking at in the future? How do we want to fund this? What do we want to do? I know there is... As Jen said, and you have said that there's a lot of grants that will be coming through that you could supplement for other than this initial grant, which is mostly contact tracing and some nursing as it works out. Um, but this other grants would be more geared towards, I mean, and, and she feels that's where the state is moving to more shared services groups like we're belonging to now, but this would just be a different group. Um, that we would invent on our own, kind of maybe having Greenfield as the head of that. Um, so I, I see a path forward where it could work and it makes me less nervous of just going, jumping into a, the, the deep unknown. So I think, I think we could make it work, um, but it, it's, well, it is a lot I, of work. I feel, no like, about that. I feel like it's really um, gonna work because our senior center is based on Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield. And Sunderland is part of this little group. And Alex has obviously been working for the Foothills, and he's training Mike Archibald now, like I said, on the, to do all like contact tracing and the Maven and all that. So he and Mike already have a relationship. So I, I feel like the relationships are to working to our advantage to be together and to be, raise the synergy of services because the bottom line is our seniors are not getting the services and i we just got to do it we've got to you know bite the bullet and make sure that they're getting more you know they need more care than we're getting and so um especially i mean if this is ongoing this pandemic is gonna gonna be ongoing for a while a couple years more at least and so we have to figure out how we're going to live with this and how we're going to help our seniors because they can't stay isolated the way they are. We've got to be able to do something. Yep. And, and I feel like this is the way forward because it's, it's, it's going to be expensive. And so, and we just, you know, the money doesn't, isn't around for, for our availability. So we have to be creative. And the, and the synergy of, of this group, plus this is how the state wants to fund stuff. And your story that we're building is very, is really good. I mean, that was a good opportunity. And we just got to make, go ahead. I just want to make sure that the staff in your office who are buried already, that we I know. can take I know. most I, of but, this and do what this we is need the problem. to do. If we have no way forward and we're about to go, because we have no understanding of what collaborative thing might happen, then we, if, if I'm told we have to go forward with a new position, I have to do that in the midst of budget season. I know, I hear you. And, and so you hear me, but the work related to that is, fairly large. Mm -hmm. So, so what I'm, I need not, everybody to understand is sure other things fall off the radar screen, but then the fire hits and I spend I, four hours de dealing with something that keeps me from doing the work I know. that never, I also have to do. There's too much work. There's too so much work. So that's why I'm saying staff, if we're going to do this, then everybody admits that they're creating this workload and we move in this direction until something happens. If that ch if if we move in a collaborative shared services manner, where someone else is the fiduciary, right. that needs to happen sooner rather than later. Well, so whatever takes, meeting needs to happen soon. It's not happening tonight. So uh, we have to make a decision tonight. So, um, you know, and, and because we don't have six months to make this decision, we got to make it now. And we, we are jumping into a cliff a bit. And my goal is to not dump all that on you. So my goal would be to have another person be the fiduciary responsibility and then work together through grants and, and we have some funding to, to pay towards that, but if we have to work that out first. Well, well uh, but that's the thing. If they're creating this position via grants, 
um, those grants are intermittent. Well, there's no guarantee that we could they're even not. They're, they're not they're just not. doing it through grants. No. Um, it, there's a, again, there's a lot to work out here and we don't have all the answers right now, but we only can do one answer tonight, which is always the case in this position. You never have all the information you want when you have to make a decision, but uh, we'll protect you. Yeah, sure no, not if I don't have the support to do it. And that's we'll really what it's that. come down to is we need the support to get these things I done. I know, we need the support to do everything else we're doing too. Nobody at the scene, you know, it's a wastewater apartment. We have a new position here that we're gonna have to hire for. There's a million things to do. This is one more of them. Um, it just, it's a it, lot This is a, new, a completely new position in the last, what, 16, 17 years, Carolyn? Oh, no. So no. we have it's, to go back and, and research what that expectation is who that person reports to? It, it's, it how was that's in the managed. last in the last five or six years. No, I mean before when we had our own public health nurse. That yeah. was sixteen some odd years ago before Lisa left to go to the cop. No, Remember that was part time too. Yeah, but that wasn't that long ago. We we had Alex will get a job description from Melanie Zamoyski, which is what the job description we use for the public health nurse. Um, you know, advertisements in Greenfield that we all agreed to in our meetings. We can, um, Alex and, and Melanie can re, re, re configure that for our public health nurse, okay? So you don't have to worry about the job description. It will get done. And then this could morph into, as when the spring comes and the grants are open, this could morph into not us having the, the job here, just like it right. is now. But I can't guarantee that. So we need to prepare and so to we're have moving that job. forward. So we need to move forward with a job description. It's a part-time job. It's not a big deal. Um, we'll go to the personnel committee. We'll get that job description approved. We'll find a, what pay scale it goes to. Um, we'll put it on the you know class comp for the town meeting. That's all. We, that's all we have to do. And then if we don't use that position, it's still available should we want that position in the future. We don't know how, I don't know how much money we're gonna get from grants and what, who's gonna do what. I, want, I know we need public health nurse because I'm not chasing down TB cases and stuff like that. Okay. But I'm, on the other hand, if what my primary focus for the public health nurse has always been is for the seniors. And so if I can get more hours for the seniors doing it this way, we're going to do it. Okay. So understand, a lot, of, a lot goes into that. I know. Um, we have to find space. Space is at a premium. We have to be able to, because, you know, as of June 30th, that space that used to be the town, the select board and the town administrator's office would become available if you continue to maintain the vote to separate from the COG. But if you have a public health nurse, that public health nurse has the same needs, privacy and confidentiality, storage, the whole nine yards. So we run into the same situation where we're still, right, space is that. not at a premium in here. And so if you're going to dedicate that space, because we don't have space at the church right now, right. but we have to be able to plan with what we have for resources is what I'm telling you. But I feel like we're flexible enough at the church that we can come up with some kind of situation that will allow privacy and will allow the nurse to be with our seniors three days a week. Because that's my goal, is to give the nurse, the nurses, who, even if the FERCOG, we stayed with the FERCOG, I still was in, intent on them moving over there so that we'd have face-to-face -face time. And we needed that, we need that office anyway. So but they're not planning to have a nurse's office over there, Carolyn. Well, that's not part of the plan. Yeah. So that's what that's what I mean is we have to be able to move forward with some sort of a plan. Otherwise, we're going to spin in circles and we don't have time had, for that. I had talked to Dave about this. I feel like we can find a place for the nurse, whether it's, a, you know, we ask the DA to make a couple more petitions, whatever. We can find some space over there for the nurse. I'd rather see it in Greenfield with, and then some, you know, yeah, but I don't know. Trevor, the whole the whole point of this is to have face to face time with our seniors. Oh, I get that. You know, I know. if if you go to the senior center, you can get your blood pressure checked. Mm -hmm. 
all three days. If you if you have a question on your medications, all three days. I just days don't you see it in see. that space at the moment. So that's my nervousness is trying to figure that out. And I, I see it in the future. I just uh, in six months, I don't know. That's my we'll concern. We'll try to figure it out. We'll try to figure it out. What do they currently do right now? Do it all there. Mm -hmm. It's it's available um, on so, Wednesdays. So it may wind up that that's the place we do it. Well, we might have to use that right. place, and we can't turn it over for uh, our planner first right. or whatever. But because we don't have a planner in six months either, so. so. Well, that's part of a budgeting process. I I've, know. I've yeah. mentioned that to the board before. Yep. If we're going to put a planner in place, then yep. we need to. We do. Start that in the budget process. Yep. So uh, grant person. Yep. Just too much work. Well, but so this is why I'm asking is there's a lot of moving parts to do this transition. Mm -hmm. And I feel like six months out, if we don't have anything concrete, it's going to be very hard. The other piece of this is notifying everyone that we will be separating from the cog services because the people that are familiar clients with our current nurse should be advised sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. because otherwise they will be very upset at us and everyone. And we won't be able to give them a that's why I'm reasonable hoping, explanation. I'm hoping we'll have some sort of overlap with, you know, if we can, um, if this goes forward, then we'll have some kind of overlap happening once we post a job and, you know, and we're satisfied if we get. And so how are we going to post a job if it's not funded? It will be funded, Casey. No, I mean, overlap from July, from June to July. Because the person I've been trying to recruit for almost two years has said that they would be willing to volunteer some time. And work with the outgoing people? Yes. Okay. And they have, yeah. There's a I mean, lot but to, we have there's to do. There's a lot to do. There's a, it's a lot of moving parts, Carolyn. That's we're all I'm saying. We're not going to have it done yes. tonight. Yep. And, and those moving parts generally are going to happen in here. So if I suddenly have to pivot and direct staff to handle all of this, they're going to be in in just as confused a situation as I might be, or as the people walking through the door are. So I would like to prevent that by having a solid plan in place. Yes. And we'll be working. Yes. Don't worry. Oh, I'm worried, but we'll I'm very worried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's you know it's, we're working. We're, I don't. Yes. Do we do we have a lot of work ahead of us? But we're working towards more services for the seniors mm -hmm. and it's better services because people are going to have three times the face time that they have now mm -hmm. so do i feel like it's a good opportunity for seniors yes mm -hmm. i feel that every senior is going to be completely satisfied um, that we're doing more than we have mm -hmm. that we're doing now and there's nothing i can do about it because you know it's been very frustrating yeah you know and Everything that we're talking about, none of this is a reflection on Lisa. Of oh, course no. not. This That's is, why we uh, joined the cause was because is, of Lisa. Um, She's fantastic. You know, and you know, I I have concern that you know that if everything isn't in place, you know, we may be letting our seniors down, yes. which I'm concerned about. Um, but then to get these things going, you know. I'm, I'm a firm believer that we should be trying to find somebody that can either work 12, 15 hours a week to augment Casey's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody that's capable. And just to, because we got so much going on right now, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that obviously aren't planned that are happening right now that just put everything into a tailspin yeah. because you can't do the regular job. Uh, and so, um, you know, there may be somebody there that we can is familiar enough with the town of Deerfield that can help us out for a number of hours a week and just, you know, whether the, I don't know, I think some of it we could probably skirt with ARPA funds or no. You guys have to decide how you want to handle that. But I mean, it's for just, you know, it just, the big thing right now is we got to get over this hump somehow. And right now, you know. I the hump just seems to be getting bigger, not smaller. I, I have been thinking a lot, and everyone's going to want to shoot me through the camera, but I've been thinking a lot about an override because, you know, it's, at some point, 
you need to look at the operations of a town and go, this isn't functioning. Like there is just not enough people to do this amount of work with this amount of people and staff. And at some, you know, every 20 years or so, you got to look at things and go, do we have the funding in our staff to accommodate what we're trying to, you know, accomplish or not? And, you know, I'm starting to realize just, there's just, I'm not starting to realize, I've seen it for however long I've been doing this job. This job is a burnout job because it's so, so much coming at you at once and you never know when you walk in in the morning, it's not like making widgets where you know what you're doing every day. Every day it's something different and it's catastrophic and it's like, how do you, you know, it's, it's major stress. It's a lot going on and, and it takes a, a really special person to be able to handle that and do that work knowing that at the end of the day, that pile of work grew. It didn't get smaller, it got bigger and really crazy stuff. And um, we have a good team, but I think, I think we need to look at you know, we have, um, with, with, we've got a topic coming up where we're accepting, the, probably going to accept the, um, the resignation letter from Barbara Hancock, who's moving on, and that position was a three-position position. So it was town clerk, tra tax collector, and treasurer all in one. We're only one of two in the state that do that. So we should look at kind of adjusting that. Is that going to need different personnel and different staff and funding to now run that run that job differently those jobs differently and how do we support the accountant and the finance and all of that and then how do we support this office and needing a planner and a grant person there's really like it's we're at a point where where so much is changing it's time to kind of really look at our staffing our funding and go okay like we've put off resetting the town for a long time but we should really have a good couple day meeting of like laying this stuff out and not in a you know it's hard in a two hour select board meeting when you've worked all day to to think clearly enough to just lay these plans out but they're complex enough that we really need to take some time to do that and um and figure out do we have the funding to do that or do we need to have a one-time adjustment to reset how we run the town because we have enough changing right now. We may need to. My two cents, but <laughs> I know you don't ever want to agree to an override. I, <laughs> but, but you know how I these, feel about override. I do. Uh, override cor is a correction. It is. And and then you move on. Mm -hmm. But if it's not truly a correction, it it's has just to. An excuse to spend more money. No, and it, it is not it, a correction. It can't be. A, it's got to be a correction. We have to come up with a correction, and then you go ask. For right, it. and that's why I, I think I, it, I, we're sitting I mean, down and laying out. Do we have that or not? You know, it's lack of personnel to adequately do what's expected it's, of the, it's town, the town personnel. But it, it's you know we have a sorely lacking maintenance of town buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, that's you know, a huge resource. That's, and that's, that's, that's a legitimate reason right. to go for an override, right. and, is to fund a maintenance account. Yeah, because, and it's, all, you know, it, and it's also legitimate to say, we need a planner. It's the right personnel. Right. It's just not adding a body. That's right. It's skills. Right. So, and and so here again, that, it's that just skill level right now, is, you know, what I'm suggesting is not Yes, it's adding a body, but it's a capable body. Not, I'm not talking about the grant writer planner that I talked about earlier. It's somebody that is capable. Um, you know, we've got grad schools in the area that may, you know, municipal, uh, and some people that might be able to help us out. You know, it's not just throwing uh, an administrative assistant out here and say, "Okay, you handle things." Right. That that won't work. No. Nope. Um, we need somebody that has some municipal skills to them just to help us get over this hump. And it, I think, you know, right now it's probably, you know, three to six month period of time. You know, by the time next fiscal year comes around, I think we'll, you know, as long as we can get over this hump, we'll have a very good game plan of what to do for the next fiscal year. You know, as Casey mentioned earlier, we got budgets coming up. We got all those hearings that we have to go through. Um, and, you know, that's tying up. You know, we got 
um, Alex on the, the Zoom tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Jennifer quite often. Uh, these are extra hours on top of yes. what they're normally working. Right. Um, and you know, frankly, that's a burnout position as well. It is. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it is. That wears you out significantly. You know, and there's not a lot of Gen Xers coming up through. I keep saying this, but there's the baby boomers people. are 80 million, and I think there's 40 million Gen Xers. 45. So 45 million Gen we're Xers. 45, we're part of 45 what? Something like that. But wow. there's just not that many wow. So the resources to hire are one thing. But fundamentally, if you're going to talk people. about an override, I would make one comment. And sort of both David. I'm kind of part of the old fat guy generation, so. <laughs> I don't know which one that is. I don't know. You might be in the boomers. <laughs> nope. You might be the tail end of the boomers. Yeah, I was a baby boomer. Um, so. One thing that you could frame it like is, is so you have, you have goals for the community, economic goals, other types of community goals. All of those play a part in how your community resources grow. We need planning elements because economic development is key Gross. for the town to continue to support itself adequately. Yep. We also understand now that the complexities of some of these jobs do not vary well. Mm -mm. And that means rearranging and restructuring. And so that's an important piece to keep in mind. It's not just, you know, about the facilities that haven't, we haven't really addressed for a long, long time. It's about fundamentally where do you want the town to be in five or 10 years? Mm -hmm. And so that's how you frame consideration of an override. It's not just about the people and the resources. It's about where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, it's town meeting seven to 10 years ago, voted to expand and hire somebody for building maintenance. Yeah. That was absorbed into highway department and we get very little building maintenance. Right. That could change, that could morph into its own job. But yeah. again, it's what's the overall planning effect of adding these yeah. things? So well, that's an and important again, consideration. It's, it's, you know, I, recommend I am not an advocate of just throwing bodies at a no. property. No, uh, skill a problem. You've got to have this right skill set mm -hmm. um, you have to and the right personality. Them. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know, it's like, well, one of our newest hires, Alex. Mm -hmm. It's part of it is because of his personality as well as his education. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's able to communicate with people, which is kindly <laughs> very important. You know, for a town to not be adversarial, but right. be you know, there's an together. element of customer yeah. service not that's that, very important you know, now. It was adversarial before, but when we're looking at people, you know, that's one of the criteria that we look at. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly um, I do now. You know, you know, when we hired Jen, you know, part of that was her personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had a heck of a background, but mm -hmm. she had a good personality too. Right, we to felt that way. Yeah, you know, I think um, I don't. I would just recommend maybe we take some time over the winter here to. Yep. Think about a layout of what we're going to do here. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to end up, I mean, who knows what's going to happen if the MMA camp, uh, conference is going forward or not. But If I, it goes forward, we should we, meet we up should, there. And we should talk about this. take some time. You know, we, know we usually do we the do. budget at breakfast. Yeah. Maybe we don't mm -hmm. focus so much on the budget. We just talk about more big picture, kind right. of like how do we want to reorganize things. Yep. Kind of things. Cause I, I mean, I agree. You will only get my support for an override if it's legitimately a fix. Well, that's what I'm and, saying. And that, you, I don't know if it is, but I'm just saying we right. should take the time and, and to and lay it, out and right. see if it and is. So let's see. Maybe, or maybe we there's need another to come fix. up with a creative fix. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the advantage. And I, and of, I don't think when you listen to what we're saying, right, we're basically all saying the same. We thing. are. If so I'm, it's not. It's not like we have to. Um, have a lot of compromise. It, what it is is we're trying to articulate articulate different ideas, and the, and the ideas are actually pretty similar. Right. So I agree with that. And the way um, we've been doing the budgets for the last couple of years, anyways, having all the groups together at the same time, really works well. Helps a lot. With yeah, that. actually, I, I mean, I feel uh, Julie has done an outstanding job of of working together with us. Mm -hmm. With Brenda, I, mean, Brenda I think and they Julie's understand. Great team. Yeah. I mean, they understand that. 
the thirty per, roughly thirty percent that the municipal government runs on is getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. Yep. That's what I'm and, saying. And we're and what we're our frustration, we're seeing the frustration of being squeezed because we're not even allowed to go to the two two percent growth kind of stuff. Right. Because it's eaten up by we're getting eaten, you know, and there's nothing to cut. We've been cutting I have been right. cutting stuff from the time. It's, it's I, hard to come up with a creative cut, way to I mean, come we, up with everything a position. has been cut down to the bare bones. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a lot of cut school choice. Well that's gonna be I mean we lot, we, we need to have some discussion on that at some point. Mm -hmm. But you know when a third of uh, your population at a high school is school choice. That's adding a lot of cost to the town of Deerfield. Well, because we pick up fifty percent of the cost, yes. And we, and yep. we but I, I don't know how regionalize. I, mean, I know. I don't Another know big topic to talk about. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I think Jonathan Edwards and I have had a few meetings together on that, uh, maybe twenty years 20 ago. Twenty years ago, right? <laughs> uh, I think we all still need oh, it. Oh my God. But, um, oh. You know, there's I don't know. So, All right, I don't want to you know, education is the most important thing that we can do for our children. Oh, you know, and our future. I know, and we, sure, have, you know, we have to ensure it. But and, you know, you have that, and then you, we're paying for charter schools, which I understand the purpose of charter schools, but to me, a charter school is nothing more than a private school. Mm -hmm. If you want to send your child to a private school, you pay for it. Yeah. The town should not have to be paying for it. The state should pay for it. I agree 100%. But that's, mm -hmm. you know. I know. I guess it's so we're frustrating. Opening a lot of Pandora's boxes. Yeah, there. right. Exactly. <laughs> How many more? I'm going to start hiding behind this computer. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is all Casey's idea. <laughs> oh, thanks. What yes, mean? exactly. Somebody needs to buy me no. the flak jacket. Six six five. One, yeah. No. <laughs> she lives closer now, so you don't have to drive this far. I know. So I guess um, we don't need to take a vote on this because we've already voted it. You're just saying moving on, so, and so uh, I guess that the the direction is to is to have Casey um, confirm that this was the vote. Reply, that has not reply changed. back to okay. yep. the council that that's what's going on. Okay, so I've been instructed by consensus to confirm that this this vote stands. Yep. Uh -huh. The next thing on our topic is. We received the resignation of our town clerk, a treasurer, tax collector last week. Uh, Barbara. I'd like to, uh, I'd I'd like like to, to cry her, in the corner for yeah, a minute, please. I, 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 well, I was in the office luck. when she handed it in. I looked at it and I read it. Hmm. And it didn't ring a pin. And then I, it took me about five minutes after I read it. I said, wait a minute, she's resigning. Oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So, um, you know, Barb has done an excellent job for the town of Deerfield over the years. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I couldn't. Amazing employee. Uh, you know, just recently what she's done with uh, getting some of our notes refinanced and stuff that saved the town a lot of money. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, I mean, just things like that that really go unseen. Uh, you know, it's, uh, she has been an asset for the town of Deerfield. Yeah, she's it's been incredibly. ashamed to lose her. Incredibly talented. But it's. Uh, I do wish her luck in her job. I know she's moving on to more of a financial role yeah. and treasurer um, collector, treasure role. collector yeah. role with finance and budget. And um, yeah. and I I, um, I have enjoyed working with her, and I've learned a lot from working with her. She's had a way of teaching me about town government and how it runs, um, and it's been really instrumental in helping me shape my views on how local um, public service is supposed to be done and how you take care of your people and, and really the regimented way that you even just send out bills so that people can expect each year to get their tax bill around the same time. Um, that people come to expect their town government to operate like a clock and that was one of her assets to be able to do that and um, I know she's instilled that in the staff that's in there now they will pick up the ball and run for a while with that um, we'll talk about that later but um, so I'll make a motion to accept re regretfully accept um, Robert Hancock's resignation oh, and I'll second that which will um, she will be planning to work through Friday, January 7th. Mm -hmm. Because 
she wants to see the real estate collections through to the due date. <laughs> this kind of shows what kind of person she is. So, um, and then she'll spend time with Sarah and Jen to help train them on the duties. She's working on her own. Yep. Okay. Do you have well, a second? Have a second. I think yes. Oh, okay. okay. Any further discussion? I just didn't say it very loud. It was right. like, oh, so depressing. One more thing. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Can I vote no? <laughs> yeah, we can. What if we say no? Yeah, right, no. can we say no? No. We just, no, no, I'll say yes. Sorry. Aye, Trevor. Aye, Dave Wolf. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks again, Barbara. Yeah. Uh. Okay, your mail. I'll just wait for my report. Hmm? I'll just wait for my report. It's long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what time is it? Yeah, you keep. You listed it after the mail. The mail is the mail. I could have included just the mail. Well, the mail, the the mail is um, the dams are safe. At yes, the moment. So I knew you wanted thing. to see that, Carolyn, so I made <laughs> sure it was in there. A report that the dams have been inspected. Yep. Caraman, Somerset, they're all set. Yeah, that's the dam thing. Is this the mail list or not? Mail that's list. the mail list. So we're all dam safe. So this the is the mail list. <laughs> oh, you know what? I forgot to change the title. This is, this is un yes. unanticipated. Yes. Okay. Event, Dave. Yeah. So it, it was rains. late last night. I mean, for today. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Okay. Yeah, so you had two All things, right. and one of the things in the mail was um, this request to support the local, I said control, but I think it may be local setting of speed limits. There is a bill in the house about this. I just don't know what the bill number was. And so what I did was I delegated the communication between Kathy and Jennifer to get some more information. And we weren't able to obtain that for you guys to review, because okay. I would prefer you I guys have the bill. Um, we have, yeah. I think we have the ability to do five, Five miles an hour under right now. They're what they're doing is they're considering giving towns without state intervention the control to set their speed limit. Yeah. And so I know that from Kathy's email, they have talked to Chief Patrick about it. Um, and he suggested that you guys weigh in. The problem is is you can't weigh in without the information. So yeah, we're waiting I, for a little I'd more. I probably information. want to weigh in with Chief here. Just talk yeah. to him a little bit. Okay. So, so I didn't add it to the agenda as an item, but I right. did bring it to her to your attention yep. with the intent yeah, to see if we could follow up. There are a couple towns in the area that are posted as you're coming into town. Yes. Uh, maximum speed limit is 25 miles per hour unless otherwise posted. Right. Right. Like uh, Greenfield. Greenfield yep. does it. Holyoke yep. does it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is that the uh, earmark? So yes, we received training. We Bridge. received an MOU to work with the FERCOB Fur Fur as they disperse police reform earmark funds to the towns in Franklin County. And so, in order for them to disperse the money, we have to sign this MOU. I received it Tuesday from Tracy Rogers, so I put it on as an item unanticipated because I want. I don't want this to slow down. I want to keep this moving because I know it's very important for the chief and his operations. Are they actually conducting a bridge? Yes. Right now? Bridge Academy is coming up. There is? Yes. Okay. The problem is it's totally inadequate. Right. Yeah, there's not enough anywhere near so, the county, but we'll take I mean, whatever we can. I mean, we take whatever we've got and keep Well, they going. figured, well, John, when I talked to him earlier, and this is before a lot of the information, he figured the town of Deerfield's expense was going to be close to 55000 yeah. Right. Just so, for the town of Deerfield. So just I would like us, to, as a note in the minutes, that $8,400 towards a $55,000 bill is yeah. totally inadequate. Yep. And that the total earmark is only $100,000. And that it is. This will it get is the totally gas BS, to get to the, really. to the training. And so the comment should go back to our legislature legislators that they need to beef up the money. Yeah. Right. Well, we wanted I mean, a meeting honestly, and then it all fell apart. We, again, that's something we need to bring up at the MMA conference. I, yes. I do believe that would be useful for the board. For sure. As a group, you know, we were not able to get together because of this COVID stuff for the Western Mass Group. So we need to 
organize again somehow and, and really bring this forward again. So that was discussed at my last stamp program meeting and we were trying to get some input from the police chiefs at a, we do these short term, like two hour meetings every three months to see if we could get that. And we're not completely confirmed that we could do that, but that, that consideration that the Franklin County Selections Association had tried to get a larger meeting together was voiced. And regretfully, we weren't able to do that. And it's actually impacted a lot of other towns that that wasn't able to be moved forward. So I think if you want to see that, then it would be useful to reach out to the Selections Association yeah, program I, group. Yeah, as soon as I, I will call them. I'll call them tomorrow. I mean, they we all understand yeah. that this is a pressurized situation. We've got to do something. But so it but looks well, well, we were trying to meet as a Right. As, as a, by, as a yes, as five a, counties. Right. Well, at least four of us, four mm -hmm. counties. Right. So I think we need to make sure we do that. Yeah. If, if we do, end up going to Boston, we have to do that. Do you, um, so I don't know, if, did Chief look this over at all? I was wondering, I don't see anything here other than um, the municipality shall provide for a cargo financial report of activities. That shouldn't be pretty, that should be pretty easy yeah. to comply there's nothing in here that I don't see anything requires in there us to be onerous or anything like no that, right? and if you would like me to have John look at it before it's signed yeah, I'm that's okay with that fine um, I, I mean, just wanted just you to see it and understand well, why it's I, in front of you I'm good so I would make a motion that Dave sign this after John reviews it yep, I'll Quickly. second that and I, or, I don't or yeah because he'll just turn his bills into Brenda I don't think there's anything right, Brenda and, we just need to keep the bills yeah. for seven years which we do anyways, so yeah, I don't see anything in here that's creates yeah. extra work for, for the it's gonna create extra work for Deb. Right? Well, yes. I mean Deb, Debbie's gonna have to and Brenda. Everything. Oh Debbie. Yeah. Debbie and Brenda. and Brenda. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah. But we would have to track it anyway because we're right. pay, we're paying for it. Right. So yeah. I mean I don't think it's that hard to earmark no, where it no, went. So no, no. Okay. Good. Okay. So I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. Thank you. Okay. Wastewater treatment per diem. Yep. So uh, you could talk about this okay. too if you want, but I. So <clears throat> we have, as you know, the chief operator is retiring. Actually, the. <clears throat> as of June, January 2nd, and we had, we had reached out to the, our engineering company for some assistance to hire, even on a short-term basis. Um, and so we did get some feedback and a response from them that might allow us to hire somebody on a per diem basis to keep the plant running. And so, the public works superintendent and myself respectfully request that the select board authorize us to hire a per diem operator at not less than a hundred dollars per hour, which could translate to 300 between 300 and 400 we think per day in time paid or secure an outside vendor that may cost upwards of $1,500 per day, so we think the per diem option makes more sense. It yeah. would be a short term solution. We have to have everybody understand that um, because it, it's a stopgap measure while we try to hire for the position. That vacancy has been posted and the job description is in a format so that's acceptable to go I, out. I just want to make sure we're going to be in compliance. Well, that's the key. That's so the I key. had a meeting okay. with uh, Dave and Kevin, Tony, Peter. Um, this morning, a, a phone meeting just to talk about where we're at. We're we're in a tough spot. There are no um, Connecticut's in the same spot. Everybody in the state is in the same spot. Um, I think Lennox or Lee just had the same issue. Um, there aren't any operators. Nobody's working. So with this skill, um, so Dave's going to reach out to um, um, DEP to let Kirpaka. Kirpaka I can't think Dave Kapakis, I think his name is. I can't think of it. I can't ever pronounce his last name, but 
he's um, in charge at the D DEP just to let them know what we're up against and what we're dealing with so they're not they're not caught off guard. Um, Kevin has been talking with a gentleman that may does not want to come here but is w may be willing to bail us out uh, give us a okay. few hours uh, a day um, and we're trying to write down all the information from Gary how you operate the plants we've got a team coming together to to document that and and produce a standard operating manual so anybody could understand how the plants run what valves move all that kind of thing um, we have, uh, um, I'm trying to think, we, we're going to have a meeting every uh, week, for, I think every week for the next four weeks to kind of figure out where we are. Monday morning, we're kind of all on board to figure out okay. who does what, how we do it. Um, Dave's going to offer uh, Peter to help us. He's run uh, some plants before. He doesn't have a wastewater operator, but he's an operator and has run um, Long Meadows DPW, which does their plants and stuff. So just to get us through until we can find somebody. Um, so Tony's going to help. Um, so D, uh, you know, Dave's mm -hmm. firm is really, DPC is really stepping up to the plate to try and help us. But we're in a, we're in a, difficult position. We're in a really difficult position without staff that know how to run these plants. And the licensing. And, and so the, the reason we would hire a per diem is to operate under that per diem's license. No, that's fine. I just want to yep. make sure we're in compliance. That's what we're, that's uh, our that's goal. That's my That's our goal. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's my first request is to authorize Kevin and I to do that. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kevin. He doesn't hey trust me. <laughs> he does not trust me. And then we, oh, go ahead. I know you have a No. Idea. So then the next item. So the next piece is, I'd request that the stipend for our current certified operator be increased to $600 per pay period because of the additional coverage tax. requirements. I, um, I mean, yes. Yes. Okay. I, I will make that motion. And I'll then, second that motion. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there's there's okay. a couple of motions here that maybe we roll all into one motion because there's one other thing. And so my third request would be to allow the public works superintendent and myself to work with DPC um, to negotiate fees and stuff for the reporting and other documentation that we need for compliance. Did I cover it, Kevin? Yep. So those are the three requests. Us be allowed to hire the per diem, which is kind of outside of what we normally ask, but frankly, we've got to get this person on as soon as we could negotiate something and we need the ability to do that. And then increase Benoit's stipend as of the next pay period mm -hmm. uh -huh. and negotiate with DPC on the fees for reporting and other documentation because that's going to be above what our normal through. contractual costs are. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I will make that motion. I'll second that motion. For D DPC, um, well, we'll hire per diem. Yep. D DPC to work with yep. making sure that happens and then the $600. For the stipend. stipend. So he's doing okay. both those jobs. Yep. Okay. Thank favorite. you very much. I, I Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn. I David Wolfman. And we'll I'll report back to you anything I can. Again, we'll have that meeting next week, so we can all get there if, if you can, or I'll, I'll report back to Dave if he can't get there or whatever. It's just to keep you on the loop of what we're doing and what we're trying to do. I I don't know. There's there's nobody going into this position, and I don't know how uh, the state is going to deal with this. I mean, we're not the only ones, and anybody out there who wants to get a job in wastewater treatment or operator's license can make some money because there is, mm -hmm. there is such a need. And it's not super technical. I mean, it's technical schooling you need to learn, It's and it's also somebody well. who knows how to take machines apart, valves apart, put them back together. Somebody who's mechanically inclined and can figure out, you know, how to do some light chemistry, I think would would be fantastic. The problem fantastic. is you got to have certification, right? And we'll help and with that. To get we, that certification, you need hours. Yep. And we and that's that. where the problem is. There's no pipeline of anybody that wants to take. Well, I think hours. In, in the last posting we put that we were willing to train. Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Do anything to get somebody in. Yeah, I mean somebody. Can, We've got well, you have to have somebody right dependable. Right yes, good. Yes, and, exactly. You know, We've had a certified operator out there for quite some time, and we did change the posting to be able to 
create some incentive that we would support, you know, yep. putting that person through the testing, which is a, can be a significant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, impact, but also would allow us to train that person sort of ground up. Yep. Right, Kevin? Thumbs up. All right. So. Okay. So that's that. Did you so, guys do the vote? Yes. It's reserved. I missed that part. I was taking okay, the last thing I have on the agenda is to appoint Jennifer Wallace as our Board of Health burial agent. Yes. Thank you. Oh. oh. So wait, I got other things. Huh? I got Not other things that. related wait, to this. I said on my agenda. I didn't <laughs> say yours. <laughs> let's just vote this. So I, yeah, I you vote the burial agent, but I'm going to ask you to do something else related to that. All right. Well, okay. let's vote this one first. I, I will make a motion to um, have her be our burial agent. I'll second that motion and thank her for that okay. work. Any yeah. further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolf. Now, do I sign this or does she sign this? Um, you need to sign it as the as Chair. a representative of the Board of Health. So okay. we're the little arrow says sign? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> okay. If not, we'll get you another one. <laughs> if not, we'll get you another one. <laughs> Administrator's report. Did you just ask me if I wanted to speak? Yes. Okay. So you let's go back. A week to the <laughs> let's go back to the town clerk David, treasure David collector. Already, he's checked out, so <laughs> he's letting you speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going back to the town clerk treasure collector resignation, we need to make some adjustments operationally in the department to continue. And so my first request is that the select board vote Sarah Kimball be named the interim treasurer collector and Jennifer Wallace be named the interim town clerk. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye, Aye Carol McDaniel. Aye, Carol. Aye, Dave. Okay. Did you make the motion? All right, the second request is that the um, select board consider, like we did with, with wastewater treatment, implementing a stipend because those duties that both Jen and Sarah would take over are outside of their normal expectation of work mm -hmm. and certainly is going to add to their add to the workload in the office. So I was, I would like the board to consider a, a biweekly stipend to support that, mm -hmm. that uh, the work associated with the treasure, the interim treasure collector and interim town clerk positions in addition to their regular work. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that that has to be done. We just have to settle on a figure. Yep. Um, does that figure have to be decided tonight? Um, I'm just trying to figure out. I don't how know much. if we have. So we have payrolls feel, closing tomorrow for this week. We should probably have a vote in place for the next payroll. Um, so I would suggest that we vote. We that the select board vote that now because it's important. Yeah. Well, I, I'm willing to vote a on. stipend, but I, I guess I would like to dis decide um, or, or discuss what additional workload we're really talking about so that it's fair. Um, I mean, it's hard just to pluck a number and say, here's your stipend for doing extra work. I mean, obviously, Moving. we're saving money because we're not paying Barbara's salary. So it's only fair yeah. that we consider a stipend and, I, and they're picking up extra work, but how much extra work and for what, what are we thinking about as the timeline? Because can we, I mean, if we're talking a fairly decent time, you know, a long right. time, I mean, it's that's different. wearing. Right. So it's a lot that's of work worth some that. money. Right. It is worth some money. You know, is it something you know, that we so, can vote uh, next uh, Wednesday before our executive session? 
so that it gives you a week to go, okay, this is the amount of money, this is the work you're going to be well, doing. Well, see, the problem is, is you can't parse every duty because oh, there's some overlap that. there. I don't expect that. But and there's a lot more work they're going to be taking on of barbs for at least a month or more. And so, it, so that's the, port, that's the point. Um, we know that that's going to go on for a while. Let's, let's get down to the nitty-gritty, and this was in my report, but yeah. let's get down to the nitty-gritty. That position as town clerk, treasurer, collector is untenable. Right. It's too much work. For My suggestion position. to everybody is that we split the positions to town clerk and then treasurer, collector. Right. Now, this was set up legislatively through the general court in 1972. Yeah. It was then changed in 2002 because what they did in 72 was they took all three they were elected at the time and made them one. And then in 2000, actually it was 2000, they started the process they requested that that be changed from elected to appointed. Right, because you never know. What they didn't do was split the positions. Right. And so- We need to send that through. That the process to do that, um, I did have a conversation with Kate about it because legally there's, there's a town meeting process and then a time frame expectation. So, but for purposes of hiring, the issue has come to me the question came to me is, do we just put it out as a town clerk treasure collector and see if we can get anybody? Nobody is doing that job. Who's going to apply for that? Two, there's two positions in the state, and this is one of them. So we don't know. It's very unique. And, the, and I look back at the old vacancy notice, because they talked about this in 2013. And it's a huge amount of work to do it. You've got to go through the select board. You've got to go through personnel board. You've got to get figure it out from a financial perspective. Put it on a warrant, get a legislative vote from the town, send it to the general court. Now we can we can put the word out, and I fully intend to do that tomorrow, to Natalie and Joe Comerford for support and for, for support to facilitate it because it's a critical function. It is. There are two positions in this place that are completely critical: the treasurer collector and the assessors. Mm -hmm. Because you can't collect taxes if you can't assess them, and you can't right. collect taxes to to provide resources for services if you don't have a collector and a, and the treasurer yep. those two things are balanced that's why most of them are together now so my suggestion is split it but it can't happen right away so it'll so be from, a while that we're paying the, exactly the two and, and so to figure out how to um how to advertise for a position or can you advertise well, for two separate positions if you're if you're legally that's what i'm going to talk to kate one. about that Right. Kate's on vacation, otherwise I would, might have a better answer for you right now. But I would suggest that we consider, if you're not going to make a decision tonight, that there a decision be made next week. Yeah. And so you have executive session at 5 o'clock. Right. And we have a, a straight-up deadline time frame with council on that discussion. Yeah. So it may not be before, it may be after. Oh, that's fine. However it works, but I think it gives you a chance to talk and But if I can't come up with a quantifiable list of things, some, it's I, gonna be difficult to give to you be, an answer. It, it doesn't have to be every single thing, but just, just so we can be fair to them and support them as to what they are gonna be doing and they, they have a, a good idea of what their tasks are gonna be and that we we pay them accordingly, you know? Well, that's all. I just. Does that make sense? It does. Or what would I you think, rather us do? I mean, no, I'm, I think I'm fine either way. I just want to make sure that it's not so much the quantitative. I think it's the responsibility that's associated right. with it because you're taking on what you're asking them to do is be the person on the bank account. Right. Be the person that's conducting the work around Loans town meetings, and and so there's borrowings that are are involved as well. Yeah. I don't think we're going to need a borrowing, but I need to have. A meeting so we are planning on having a financial meeting next week after Brent yeah. is back right so that we have some time to sort of think about this and I asked both Jen and Sarah to talk to Barbara and, and get an idea of what she thinks short term needs to be addressed right because as you and I both know we have USDA documents that have to be finalized I finalized those with Deb uh, with uh, Barb today and she emailed I signed them all she attested to them and they all went to I believe she didn't copy me yet, so maybe she hasn't sent it yet. But she'll be sending those probably tomorrow to um, Joe 
Did anybody scan them? Yes, she scanned them and she's going to send you a copy, me a copy, yeah, and then ask Because nothing leaves this place without being scanned. No, no, it's all going to be scanned. <laughs> because I she, need it. Yeah, no, she was, and, and we were trying to find out, and she probably hadn't heard from him whether he wants the originals yeah. or a scanned version. Yeah, of what, a wet, so. wet signature or not. Right. So those are the types of things that need to be in play. And we can expect at some point to try to get investments, investments change over a period of time and we work mm -hmm. with an advisor. So yep. from that perspective, I think there's some That's support awesome. for, yep. for everyone in there. There's also resources in terms of people around us that can help both mm -hmm. of them. And I, they know that they have listservs and stuff they can, and people yep. nearby that they can call. Yeah. Um, but I think from their perspective, if, if they're taking on a job, as an interim, mm -hmm. recognition of what that should be in terms of a stipend is yep. important to them. I agree. So their question to me related to how things fell on the comp plan. Yep. Because, because you've got the assistant treasurer collector is on this comp plan is at a yep. four, whereas the town, the town clerk treasurer collector is at six. And I think the assistant town clerk is at three mm -hmm. and then you know if you if you adjusted for that you would be talking the concept of placing for purposes of a stipend a in a hundred. in a more comparable area would be couple moving hundred, them around 250 a week or something like that. something like that yeah. and so that's okay. that's the question yeah. is you know this is a lot of work. They're very concerned about it, and I agree with them. And I've I've said to them point blank, if you need our help, we were ha we're happy to help faith you. Faith in them. They're very. They've been trained very well, and they're very good people. And I think they. Have but the they understand that done, there's a lot, it is a lot of weight, and so no they want to be properly compensated for I get that. It. That's so, fine. you know, I think how we quantify a number, the less time they wait on that, the better. Okay. So. Well, that's what I mean. Let's get it. Let's get it done on the fifth, if that works. I mean, because I, I don't really have a number other than maybe a, you know, two hundred fifty bucks a week. But um, but if you look at the comp schedule and kind of lay out a number for us, and uh, talk with them about it, and we could we could vote that on Wednesday. That's fine, and that will get it in before the next pay period. Right. Does that make sense? It makes sense for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I I. I just didn't feel com comfortable picking a number tonight. Yeah. Because this is, you know, relatively. No, we want to talk, talk about it, make yeah. sure that we're supporting them for right. sure. Okay. okay. As they support us. All right. Okay. So let me just give you the other thing. Um, so, as you know, we had some flooding over at the senior center. It was discovered on Monday. I was notified, Kevin was notified, and he deployed people to take a look at it. I followed up by taking pictures in some areas. There were some other areas I couldn't get to and sending a claims request into the insurance company. And then Kevin's staff took care of wet backing as much of it as they could as much as as they felt comfortable they could and we left um we received notification a response from maya and they sent out an adjuster and then they the same day they sent out a cleaning company with service, service master, master. Yep. to go over and week. start drying out the space and evaluating it they do have the environmental report and there may be some other testing that they ask for the service master we did. Kevin oh, actually took care of that. Oh, thanks, Kevin. So Great. Kevin got in touch with somebody from Veterans. It's actually dry in there. But oh, good, good. He, good. Did, he did advise them that we will have to, they're going to have to move their stuff. So we have to figure that part out. Yeah. But okay. for now, we've done what we can with the insurance company, and we'll wait to hear more okay. about what that plan is. But <clears throat> I did want to you know, give Kevin and his guys, especially Chris, a high five on on responding as yes, quickly as they did. That was really much. good, and certainly and helped us. Pours or dumps, or dumps, <laughs> or it leaks. It could yeah. be a radiator leak. We're not sure. Yet. It looked like it. I think it they worked like on it. it. Yeah, they worked on it. So. 
Uh, we've also had some email problems over the past couple weeks, and so I think we finally fixed them today. We had to make some changes with our network server um, can you host. Can you understand? I don't understand what, what happened. Because I didn't get any. Because so, um, it was very, it was spotty. It was yeah, spotty. Was In the getting... sense, sometimes some of them came through, mm -hmm. but then other times, I know, like Jen Hoffman sent um, both Alex and I um, a link for a meeting, and neither one of us got it. Or even like, you know, sending the permit renewal, you know, the, the permit to like food operators, and then it would bounce back, you know, saying it's undeliverable, or saying, you know, they never received it, and then right. I have to resend it. And then it would take hours for them to get it. So yeah. It was weird. So what it was is there was some information missing from some of the zones in those server or net, the networks. Some technical domain thing. network servers. That's what it is. Yeah. So what we had to do was dig back into it, and I give all the credit to Pat. She did a great job of digging into this and figuring out what it was. It was exactly what happened eleven years ago, Thank or you, ten Pat. years ago. And we fixed it by filling out some paperwork and contacting the domain server network people. So it should be fully fixed within 24 hours. And we okay. finished it around noon. So we should, we should if see. If this was the same problem that we had before, even though it was years before, how, how do we, are we gonna, was it, is it fixed enough so that it doesn't occur again? Well, here's the problem. What happened was, emails had changed. So if they had sent us notification that something, because what happened was, is the company that actually hosted our domain was sold to another company. Is that GoDaddy? No, was, actually it was Newstar was sold to GoDaddy. Oh. So now GoDaddy, we're back in, with the domain yeah. service back at GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. But what got lost in translation is the administrator's email changed. And so there was no way for them to notify us. They couldn't get through. And so we had no idea that we needed to make changes in the accounts to oh. fix it. And so what had to I happen see. was the exact same thing is it happened 10 years ago because there was a change, a change in email and that information didn't make it through. Yeah. So we figured it out. I filled out the paperwork, made those changes. There's backup to have more than one person get emails about this. Right. That's the best we can do in terms yeah. of short term monitoring but also making sure that we all understand what has to happen. So a cheat sheet has to be written. I did not ask Pat to do that because it was almost four o'clock yeah. when we finished So it's still a long it. email at the app. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So that, that has taken up quite some time, and we do apologize for the issue. It took quite a while to figure out what it was we needed to do because there was so much digging into what DNS servers are. I didn't even know that. Yep. Domain network, by the way. Yep. Oh. Um, and I've been working with council on several things. I mentioned the real estate things. We also have a possible lease with Holy Family instead of just a facilities agreement. We've been talking through that. I have some reviewing before I send it to Father Reardon. And then we've got bargaining issues, zoning and planning questions. But the holidays interrupted everything. I mean, yes, most of council was out last week and this week. So we're working on setting up meetings. Although tonight. Kate did return your phone call. So I think that was really Yeah, that's wicked. Oh, nice. yeah. Wicked Kate's nice amazing. Her. She they is they amazing. do. She's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Um, we also have street lights being installed right now. We, yeah. fin we finalized that contract. There was an adjustment I had to make in that contract. But they started the street lights install. We have received notification from Eversource that. They will give us more information about what resources will contribute to the conversion in addition to the Green yeah. Communities Grant. And Mark Rabinsky, who's the grant coordinator out here, and I have been working on that, but I won't know more until next week. Okay. Um, we also have the DPC USDA loan application engineering contract mm -hmm. that was I left for David to sign. Okay. That was all ready for him to sign. Great. Because um, you guys had voted that he's yeah, done. Yeah, that's done. Yeah. So that should be done. We just need to scan it and get it back to them. Great. Right. Thank you. Um, we do have the other USDA documents that you worked with Barb on. So hopefully yep. if those are ready that's to done. be done, then yep. Joe Del Bove won't be yep. mad at me. Nope. That'll all be finished. Um, Unless you need something from it, I might assign the wrong right. spot if somewhere. Right. But... If we need to fix something, we can probably do yep. it. But we've, we've had a lot of personnel activities. So we're facilitating several vacancies. You know, we... We had 
the certified operator, we have the chief operator that is mm -hmm. been, that we're finalizing actually getting that job description up. I think it went up today. And we've been assisting other departments with their processes because there have been some changes in how the library wants to work. Um, and we'll begin with this town clerk treasure collector thing. I knew we just needed to call Carolyn too and get her hooked up. Um, well, I before. now that you've done that, I will get in touch yep. with Carolyn tomorrow. I am going to reach out and have the guys help me on that because we can share the work a bit yeah, and they great. understand it. But that's again, great. it's it's a I holiday know. week, so yep, no, that's fine. Um, just kind of a notification, right? To we'll she needs she needs a phone call, and then we'll I'll talk yeah. to her about it. And that's in great. addition, so after our respectful workplace training, mm -hmm. we had like I said, we talked and sort of debriefed with Mary and Jen. Our Jen was really helpful in doing a lot of this because she was managing so much of the scheduling, but she had some good points to make. And since we're back in a place where everybody's really concerned about COVID and we need to have ongoing training modules, I talked to Mary and she is willing to help us do a Zoom training, a remote training that we can see the people who weren't able to come to the four training, see mm -hmm. if we can get them in, but also tape it so that we could provide it in a similar manner as what yeah. you do your um, ethics training. Ethics. Yeah. Um, so that we have, you know, people can participate or not participate, but definitely we have the elements of that acknowledged. training yeah. acknowledged and able to pass out to people. Yep. So Sounds I thought good. after going through it, I do see the value in having the the interaction, mm -hmm. but now that we're seeing COVID cases explode, I'm I'm really not, as you can see, yeah. I'm really not comfortable having a, a larger group around us. Yeah. Two, three weeks ago, it wasn't quite so bad. We weren't quite as worried about it, I guess. Um, we also have the yeah. website conversion beginning, and that's going to take a, a load of time on all of us because it's a long process. There's a lot of details. and the framework of backup support that we have to do is more comprehensive than some other towns may have experienced because we negotiated some of that to lower our costs. Okay. So deploying personnel to deal with that is going to be sort of a, a focus thing intermittently, which is going to take away from our ability to just hand out administrative support to people. Right. Um, okay. Did you hear that, Alex? <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. So these are some of the things that are in front of us. Yep. Plus the Very additional nice. work now on uh -huh. the budgets. Yep. And I was gonna try to print up your budget sheets for you just so you could see them, but I wasn't able to finish it. All right. So well, I e I can email them out or I can print them and you guys could pick them up over print the weekend. Print them is fine because then I'm gonna want to put them in a book. Yeah. 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 We don't have the budget book set up yet. I think That's that fine. that'll yeah, get started gets once Brenda yeah. gets back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, but I would let I I hope yeah. I mean, a hard copy is always easier for me to highlight. Mark it up and stuff. And so yeah. one thing that you both should know is now that we've got Alex and now that we're sort of trying to transition some of the assistant town administrators work away from COVID response and back toward, you know, mm -hmm. the budget administration and that learning curve, the two of them are going to be working with Brenda to familiarize themselves with the budget process and okay. the administration. And so this is one of those key things, the reason I brought up functionally where money is in certain pots we need yeah. to be careful of if we're going to change how we're running these nursing services. It's something that Alex is going to be paying attention to because I'm going to ask him to. Because it's a budget administration yeah. question. Yeah, no, that's fine. And so this Absolutely. is a good learning opportunity for all of us, but I think it'll be useful to start to transition yeah. away which uh, COVID isn't gone. The issue for us is we still have to. Well, well, what you have to do is redefine how we're going to work with COVID. Right, and that's the thing. And but we also need to. it's more long term. And I think it makes total sense that, you know, everything does move over to Alex. Well, monitoring those budgets, he needs to understand how he can spend the money. Um, and you guys are still the Board of Health, so there's a coordination thing there, but from a learning perspective, he needs to learn from the person who, who is the most educated in doing that work. Mm -hmm. And so I, I also want Jennifer to be involved in those conversations because as a support mechanism yeah. to both the Select Board and the Board of Health, she needs to understand as well. 
she'll be doing a larger amount of work because she'll be working on other things. But frankly, if we aren't able to deploy those resources, it's going to be harder for us to manage what's going on. Yep. And I will also say that going forward, we need to be very mindful of the time expectation of how we're handling meetings. If we're going to have hybrid meetings, it takes a lot of time and a lot of people. And so that's something we need to be aware of as we go forward. Remote meetings are a little bit easier to manage in terms of I the think, functional connection. I think if we have, I think what we'll, we'll decide to do um, is we'll be in person and then we'll be remote. I don't, I don't think any of us really feel like the hybrid is, I don't know, really works that much. It works if you have people who are presenting from uh, far away. Yeah. It works right now because you have an uptick in cases. Yeah, it works. But the it's issue I really want to bring to your attention is it's the fact that it is, it is a lot of work. It is wearing on our staff. Oh, for them to monitor a meeting. You mean to actually moderate, moderate a meeting yeah. and, and start it, record it, get it done. That's 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 why I think up. if we just, we I mean, just we can turn decide to go, I mean, at some time we just go remote. Yeah. I mean, depends. I mean, we, we are really functionally. We don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. And I so, just want you to know that you I mean, know I was I've really had... surprised. Seriously, but, I was really surprised that we don't have a new variant even yet. For our meeting, like it's I so can far. turn on the TV. I, don't, I know so far. Do we need somebody to monitor the meeting? Yes, we do. Well, we got bombed. We need yeah. somebody who can actually kick that out. Ask Darius; he'll tell you all well, about I've it. I've been there. I was on that meeting. So we still need to be able to moderate these meetings, and we don't want our our login information out there for the entire world. Although we've talked about it, if it becomes and I've had this conversation with Jennifer many times because she really the the key person scheduling. It's still a lot of work to manage a lot of meetings. I know. So if there's a transition to be made and we have to transition and restructure what duties people are doing, that may come that may become a necessity for us to operate because it's well, it's really wearing us all out. We're lucky we have Alex. A lot of towns don't. And so, Alex, what did you have? I was going to say, um, I'll gladly. Yeah, no, you help. won't. And <laughs> the other thing is, um, I'll, I'll be able to help out with um, Board of Health meetings and also help with moderation. They don't do separate meetings. No, I mean, you know, together, you know, we'll, we'll take turns. Oh, my so God. Don't worry. All right, you can talk to Jennifer about I will. that. Whatever we'll let Jennifer make that decision since she does all the scheduling for these yeah. things. And she's been great. I have to give her a lot of credit. She's... This has been a tough road to hoe, and she's managed yep. as well as we could expect, considering the amount of work and, and details coming at her, because it takes three times longer to schedule any of these meetings, remote or hybrid, hmm. than it does to just schedule a regular in-person meeting. I know. So, but you know, was, this is... That was why it seemed so exhausting. It is. It's very exhausting. I just want you to understand that they are exhausted. And Everybody we need to recognize that that wears on our ability to, to perform, know. especially when new projects are coming online. I know. I know. I, I, I absolutely do. So we're all tired. <laughs> that's all I really have, but those are some of the things that we've been working on in the last couple of weeks. Any public comments tonight? Not hearing in. Going once, going twice. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Carol. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Um, I just want to wish everyone a happy yes. new year. Happy new year. Happy, happy new year, year everybody. Happy new year. 2022 is going to be phenomenal. I hopefully, ho hopefully 2022 <laughs> will be so much fun. We're getting ready for the big party of 2023, That's right. everybody. That's Come right. On. Get ready. Carol.